Martini Emmy's been a workhorse for the Sharks this season. This is his 28th start of the year, 16 saves. Coming off a loss to the Islanders here in the shootout on Tuesday in the first game of this two-game homestand. As we mentioned, Nicholas Backstrom going tonight in goal for Minnesota as they went with Harding last night in Anaheim. Todd McClellan trying to get the Sharks out of this four-game winless streak. They did pick up a point on Tuesday, but that was little consolation for a game that they felt they had in hand. Mike Yo's team battled against a very stingy L.A. defense last night. We'll see where their legs are here on the second game in as many nights in the state of California as they're really just at the beginning of a long stretch of road games. Tyler Kennedy with the first shot of the game, deflecting wide of the net as the Sharks have the puck again. Marlowe testing the glove hand of Backstrom, who comes up with the stop, and good jump from the Sharks on this first shift, just 15 seconds into period number one. Well, coaches always put a premium on starting well, and the San Jose Sharks are the best starting team in the National Hockey League, but absolutely unbelievable. But for the Sharks, they want to start well, and then obviously they want to continue it. They have had that drop-off. They've had good first periods, but then they've dropped off in the second and third. They get a little bit loose. Joe Pavelski's line out on the ice, and when we reveal the lines and deep pairs, you'll see the change from Tuesday as Todd McClellan's experiment with putting Pavelski up on the right wing on the second line is over for now as Pavelski's back centering his own line here tonight alongside Matt Nieto and Tommy Wingles as Pavelski handles it at center ice, plays it off the boards for Wingles and he'll slap it in. Brad Stewart jumps up, plays it back to this side. Wingles there, so is Nieto. And Minnesota comes up with the loose puck, Kyle Brodziak to Matt Cook and a good stick by Pavelski breaks up the entry by Minnesota. Nice adjustment by Joe Pavelski. So both these teams have played once since they met Sunday and both lost, although the Sharks did lose in the shootout, so they had something to show for their efforts. Minnesota's loss last night in LA 2-1 was in regulation. Here are the lines and the tweak we talked about with Pavelski back off that line with Couture and back on his own. And what you'll notice about the, these lines is the fact that this is how the Sharks were going earlier in the season when they were winning all those games and winning them back to back and getting off to a great start. So not in the lineup tonight for the Sharks is John McCarthy and James Shepard. Scott Hannon not available tonight. Sharks have not talked about what injury that Hannon has, but they do confirm that he's not a healthy scratch at this point. I want to clarify that. Of course, Adam Burris and Rafi Torres is still coming off surgeries. As a shot comes to the San Jose net, Parisi looking for a tip. Got a little bit of that, but it's cleared back by the Sharks into Minnesota territory. Icing call. And also, Sharks waiting for Mike Brown to, to get healthy as well. Of course, also an injured reserve. There's your Minnesota lines. Couple of changes for them as well. They had a call up today. They recalled forward Brett Bulmer, number 54 from Iowa in the American Hockey League, and he is on in the lineup on Kyle Brodziak's line along with Matt Cook tonight. And late in the game, yesterday I thought I thought the change might be for Justin Fontaine, but he, he took a shot off the foot yesterday. Number 14 is on the ice right now, but uh, he's not. He was uh, he took the shot off the foot and late in the game, but he's just a bruise and he's back out on the ice. There's Ryan Suter, leads the National Hockey League in Minutes per game, 29 minutes and 20 seconds. He's been over 30 minutes 14 times this year. Wow, that's, that's a, a ton of ice time. That's a lot of ice time. Doesn't look like that's going to change much nope. this year. They're getting, I guess, if you base, if you break down the minutes played versus dollars paid, they're getting good bang for their buck. Yep. Of course, Suter signing the mega contract simultaneous with the deal given to Zach Parisi in the ballpark of $100 million each over a long term. The blockbuster announcement by the Wild two seasons ago. Not in their lineup tonight, but on the trip, Jason Zucker, who did play last night, Mike Rupp, and Nate Prosser. Zucker's one of those guys the Wild keep waiting to blossom. He's just up from the American League as well, but in the NHL this year, he's gone 17 straight games without a point. Charlie Coyle, the former Sharks first round draft pick. The backhand at the far side by Fontaine denied. 
And now Desjardins will skate it to center and send it into Minnesota territory. Stoner back over to this side. And that will come all the way back down the ice. But icing's waved off. There was a touch up at center. Demers to Martin Havlat. It drops for Freddie Hamilton, and he'll get it back down into the wild zone. If you're Martin Havlett there where the puck comes up the boards, a little two touches, and the puck is up on the boards, why not get your feet moving first instead of just turning and flipping the puck nonchalantly out to the neutral? I think you should ask him. I'm going to ask him. I don't understand. I don't speak Czech, but maybe we can get a translator down there. Marty knows enough English, but get your feet moving. Scandella now for the wild. They come in with... 41 points, third place in the central. Parisi, and that's off the glove of Niemi. And now Minnesota right back on it. Up at the point on this side, Scandella, he held the line. Pominville, he'll whip it deep. Parisi down there against Mark Edward Blasic. This big line for Minnesota. Parisi, Koivu, and Pominville, but the Sharks are able to get it out. That's really been part of the problem for the Sharks in the past few games, Drew. Not being able to shut down the top lines of the other team. The Tavares line here the other night against the Islanders. And the Parisi line on Sunday in Minnesota. That's exactly the point. Here's Boyle with a shot and a catch by Nicholas Backstrom as we check our Lexus keys to tonight's game. Well, when you've got problems, go back to your core. You gotta be fast, you gotta execute, you gotta sprint to pucks, you gotta make sure you can use it, the boards to get your game going faster. Short little passes, gotta play hard, battle on the boards, you gotta get your nose over the puck, one-on-ones, those situations, and be supportive, always working towards the puck, always working to get open, always working to create something, and you have to be in that supportive role, also be very positive with your teammates. Go back to the core beliefs of your team when you're struggling. Matt Cook. He'll send it into the sharp zone. And Brett Ballmer on the ice there for Minnesota, number 54. Matt Irwin lost it to Cook on the back check. Pavelski supporting brings it back up the ice for the Sharks. His wrist shot saved. And Backstrom has it go off his pads to Ballmer on the far side. And now Cook with Bronziak. And it slides through to Niemi. And Antti Niemi will cover it for a faceoff. Everybody's talked about Matt Cook and how he's changed his ways. He certainly has. Got five goals, seven assists at this point, 12 points with Matt Cook. Of course, used to be the NHL, one of the NHL bad boys, continually being harangued by the NHL for play that hmm, is questionable. Imagine he's, imagine he's paid a few dollars in fines over his career. Maybe he, maybe he and his uh, significant other got tired of that. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. Justin Fontaine deep in Sharks territory. And puck bounces out to Tomas Hurdle with Thornton and Burns. Fired back in by Minnesota. And icing called here. A lot of whistles early on in this one here in the first period. Uh, with the Sharks, too, when you look at the way that they have been playing, you mentioned that one line doing the damage, but the Sharks coaching staff want to get these guys back to playing with those strong foundations of their core, their core they were playing with earlier. That's why they went back to the lines that they've got going right now. See if they can maybe recreate that chemistry earlier in the season that was so successful. Stewart trying to measure one off the back boards. Burns slides it deep for Thornton, but he's cut off by Charlie Coyle. Hurdle wins it back. Shot from the point by Demers wide. Stewart jumps in, and now Cal Clutterbuck chasing it down, but Demers has the angle. And a delayed penalty call coming to Minnesota. Brad Stewart got high-sticked when he came in on the pinch. And the Sharks are going to go to the power play early. So Brad Stewart's coming down the, coming down the boards as they're just going to check Brad out, make sure he's not cut. Coming down the boards. Stick comes up from Justin Fontaine. One more time. Whack of the stick, and the stick rides up off of Brad Stewart's stick. Gets him in the chin. The beard may have protected him from being cut. Maybe not. Mike Hill looks on. Minnesota number 14, two minute minor high stick. So just the two to Fontaine, and we'll get the penalty in the bail arm penalty box is Justin Fontaine. 516, time of the call. Or 514, rather. And the Sharks on a Cash Creek power play now. Their first of this game. Sharks power play comes in ranked 17th. 
against the number 23 penalty kill. Sharks had a power play goal here against the Islanders on Tuesday. Couture gets it in front and a save by Backstrom as Marlowe tried to hammer it home on the rebound. But right away, puck moved quickly, went down to the net quickly, chance quickly. Dan Boyle weaves his way to center. Now the shoot-in. He's got Couture on that far side. Down to Marlowe. Now the captain. Back out to Dan Boyle. Boyle settles the bouncing pass. One time and they score! Through the wickets, pass Backstrom. one nothing on the power play. I think Patrick Marlowe deflected this in front. Shot from Joe Pavelski on the point. One-timer, he's, he's got Dan Boyle on one side, Joe Pavelski on the other. Two right-handed shots. Joe Thornton goes low high. Dan Boyle does a nice job selling that. That puck was bouncing, slided over one time at Patrick Marlowe in front. Looks like he got a stick on it. You gotta get to the front, you gotta get in the eyes. Good job there by the, the power play. Let the puck do the work. Brad Stewart looks on and goes, see that smack in the face was worth it. Let the puck do the work, get people in front, and get the puck to the net quickly. So we'll give it to Marlowe for now, wait for the official call. Here's another chance for Marlowe off the faceoff as Kennedy recovers it and plays it back for Justin Braun. Kept it in a second time. Shoots! Tipped by Pavelski just wide. I don't think that Baxham saw that one either with two people in front. Braun again. Sharks moving the puck really quickly here as Kennedy picks it up in the corner. He's checked there by Bourdain. Now Braun at the goal line and beyond. Kennedy walks it out, takes a shot, block. Another shot block. Jumping in is Vlasic from the point. This will come back around to his defense partner Braun. Sharks with a change on the fly. Braun and the tip at the side by Kennedy. Sharks hold the zone again. Now a fresh group out. Havlak back for Vlasic. He'll play it off the backboards. Comes out this side. And skating to it is Desjardins. He'll pitch it around. And now the Wild will finally gain some control as Koivu plays it up the boards. Still waiting for the official scoring play on the Sharks power play goal. Hamilton and San Jose offside. And now we've got a scrap on the near side. Kanopka drops the gloves with Desjardins. The linesmen jump in right away, though, and they're not going to let them go. They were already in there, the linesmen, on the first pu push, kind of the first punch to the chest with the gloves on. Linesman jumped in early as the whistle had already gone. More penalties to come. Joe Pavelski with the shot. Sharks with the goal. They lead it 1-0. Initially, I thought Patrick Marlowe got a piece of this on the power play. A little slide over, one-timer shot from Joe Pavelski. But he gets it between the pads, as you call, partner. Patrick Marlowe was there, not quite in the eyes. He tries to get the stick on the deflection, but just misses. And it goes off of the pads and the pants of Nicholas Backstrom. And Joe Pavelski gets his 11th of the season. I like the fact that the Sharks had the quick puck movement and got the puck to the net. Now there's a little bit of a discussion because I'm not sure why. It just looks like it's two minuters each here. The scoring play is now official. It is, as you said, Pavelski's goal is 11th from Dan Boyle and Joe Thornton. That assist for Joe Thornton now moves him into sole possession of 26th place on the all-time assist list. That was number 815 for Big Jumbo Joe. There he is. Next on the list, Alex Del Vecchio at 825. Thornton just 10 away from another... Legendary Hall of Famer on the list. I wonder if he ever just, just starts reading some of the names that he passed. Yeah, I took down Pro tonight. <laughs> Check. I don't think so. I don't think when you play you do that. I think you look back on that when you're done. But when you're playing, you just I think players are just too much in the moment. Exactly where you want them, right? Yep. So we have the minor penalties to Desjardins and Kanapka. Four on four play here in the first period. Brodeen and the 20-year-old defenseman sends it up the near side boards. Dan Boyle trying to move it up for Burns. Comes out to center for Ryan Suter. Pominville, he got the only goal last night. It was on a power play for Minnesota in their loss to the Kings. How about L.A. with the stingy smothering, stifling defensive style they're playing right now. 
Couture shot save. Backstrom lost his balance. Now Logan back after it on the far side. Spurgeon gets his stick on Couture's shot attempt. And steers it up for Miko Koivu and now up to Parisi. Nice play by Vlasic. Couture back in with Marlowe. Logan puts on the brakes. Working against Spurgeon on that same side again. And now Koivu moves it quickly again to Parisi. 45 more seconds in the minor penalties. Koivu over the San Jose line. His wrist shot routinely handled by Niemi. I like this chance because Patrick Marlowe drives to the net with purpose. Pushes his man back. Jared Spurgeon uses his speed and his size to try to crash the net and get that rebound opportunity. That's playing fast. Coyle kicks that one back to Suter. He glides in and that one deflects high off the glass and all the way back into wild territory. As we mentioned, Minnesota's going to be on the road for a while. They played last night in L.A., including this one. Six of their next seven will be on the road. And they've got a pretty tough stretch here. Coyle around the San Jose net. Gets it up to the top. Brodeen back for Pominville off his skate. Now it drops for Stewart. As he and Pavelski were trying to sort things out defensively in front of Niemi. And now Jason Demers. 1-0 Sharks on the power play goal by Pavelski. Tommy Wingles into Minnesota territory. And there's another wild penalty. And... It's just a simple little play of chipping a puck deep, making sure you chip a puck deep and track it. Hunt it down. Chip it deep. Try to hunt it down. Too much interference. You can you can interfere a little bit. You can kind of pick the man coming in after his puck a little bit, but not like that. That's what they want to get away from. So Ryan Suter makes his first visit to the Bay Alarm penalty box, and the Sharks get back on the power play. His ninth minor penalty of the year. So the Sharks are one for one and get another crack at the Minnesota penalty kill right here. Thornton out with Couture to his right, Marlowe to the left, up top. It's Pavelski and Boyle on this first power play unit. Faceoff win by Brodziak, but now the Sharks doing their best to recover it. It is cleared by Koivu. Boyle to Couture. And that's broken up by Cook. This is Pavelski. And that was almost picked off by Matt Cook again. Bronziak leaves it go. And it's cleared back down by Keith Ballard. So not quite the crispness to this power play as they had in number one. The entry into the zone. The entry into the zone didn't have that execution. Oh, collision off the puck between Pavelski and Cook. They're deeming it accidental, which I think it was. Hadlatt tried to slip a pass through in for Hurdle. Now he does again, oh. and Hurdle healed it. That's right where you want it. Burns, and now just missed. And comes out, and Parisi's going to attack shorthanded. He'll pull the trigger, and the Emmy with a blocker stop. 45 to go on this San Jose power play. And it's Hurdle, and this is offside by a bunch. You're going to be on the power play. You can't go offside, unforced. Here's the collision between Pavelski and Matt Cook. Matt Cook, I think, trying to draw one there, trying to get the officials' attention, see if they get to pick up an interference penalty. Some of. The body of work recently of Joe Pavelski, who has the only goal of this one, his 11th of the season. And also scored here on Tuesday night, the goal that initially gave the Sharks a 2-0 lead in the second period, but it was a lead they could not hold, and eventually fell in a shootout 3-2. Here's Pavelski again. Moved off the puck as it's played nicely up this side for Cook, and flipped back down again. And now the Sharks are down to a dozen seconds left on this second power play of the period. They're out shooting the Wild 10-4. Matt Irwin for Couture. Logan for Marlowe. Good one-timer and Backstrom with the stop. 
Now the penalty's over. Suter jumps out of the box. And the Wild have an attack going. Suter with Koivu. Suter fumbles it near the goal line. Now gets it across for Spurgeon, but that's intercepted by Patrick Marlowe, and he'll just get it in as the Sharks go for a line change. Marco Scandella. Koivu. And classic looking for Justin Braun. Nice little soft chip. Nieto kind of bobbles it, but still it's moving out. And Very nice. Sorry, Andrew Dujardin getting his feet moving, but Niederreiter got it back for Minnesota. As Suter steers it Niederreiter's way. We saw the man traded for Niederreiter here on Monday. Count Clutterbuck. Now the Islanders. Here's Niederreiter off the turnover. And the Emmy with the glove save. Sharks leading 1-0 as the power play comes through here in this first period. Time for the Coors Light Cold Hard Facts. On Sunday in Minnesota when the Sharks lost to the Wild 3-1, it was the 12th time the Sharks have allowed 13 shots or fewer in a game. Second time it's happened this season. The other time was in Calgary back in November. And that game went to OT. Yep. Just so frustrating when you just haven't seen that many incoming in your own zone generated so many shots as the Sharks did on Sunday. 38 shots. Of course, Josh Harding was terrific, no question about it. And you can't deny the fact, too, the Sharks have run into some very good goaltending of late. As Kevin Poulin showed us that here on Tuesday, and I think we have a San Jose penalty. No, we have another, no, another we have Minnesota another penalty. penalty. Minnesota it's holding. Oh boy, they are really not helping themselves, are they? And it's hard to get your rhythm, hard to get things going. But also for the Sharks, you've got to be able to build on these situations. You've got to build some momentum. So here's Fontaine going in. He's got the stick up. There it is. He grabs. He grabs a hold of Joe Thornton. And there's the call. Well, remember the Sharks had. Plenty of power play opportunities in Minnesota, and it actually took away from the team. Yeah, Todd McClellan did not like the power play at all on Sunday. He said it might have been the worst he's seen since he's been a coach here. That's saying a lot. They were 0 for 4. Wow. Again, polish, polish, execution. Good stick by Matt Cook. Now Brodeen. Can't get it past Joe Thornton. Cook digs in, tries to get it away from Thornton. Trips him up, and there is another Minnesota penalty. And Matt Cook yeah. just took a five-on-three call. And Mike Yo is not a happy guy right now. Cook just gives Thornton a little bump in the back to try and perhaps get him to retaliate or something. That's the old Matt Cook doing that. Yeah. Now, Joe Thornton spins off of Matt Cook. And you're going to see the stick go between the legs. And Matt and... Mike Yell is not happy. And it's not that he's not happy. Well, he's not happy that he's got Matt Cook in the box, but he's more not happy about the San Jose Sharks because it looked there like he was upset with the, the ease at which Joe Thornton went down, I think, is what Matt, with Mike Yell's argument. But I'm telling you what, if I get a stick there, I'm going down. That's, that's going to make me take a quick trip to the knees. 12 12.47. <laughs> Time of that minor penalty, and the Sharks with a lengthy five on three. And it's Pavelski pivoting at the boards. Back up top for Marlowe, and they spread it out. Boyle at the goal line, Thornton on the move, chopped away by Suter. That could have been a penalty if there weren't any already on the clock. <laughs> Pretty good hack there by Suter. Marlowe, the shot, saved by Backstrom. Yes. As Boyle put it on target, and now the Wild clear it. Get to the eyes. Once it goes to that switch up top where you're looking to set up Boyle for a one-timer, you've got to crash the net, and somebody's got to try to get there. Boyle, the puck carrier, leaves it for Pavelski. Now Marlowe on the entry, back over to Couture. Glorious chance here for the Sharks to take a 2-0 lead. Couture to Boyle. Marlowe in front, playing bad goalie now. And the shot off the target by Pavelski. Back to Joe Thornton. Now Boyle. Switches up with Couture. Pavelski now across to the goal mouth. And fought off by Spurgeon. Scandella will clear for Minnesota. 
You gotta get the puck moving. You gotta get the puck moving quicker. You gotta let the puck do the work. Don't make it die on the boards. Ten to go on the five on three as it's back to Irwin. Burns on the other side. Back to Burns. And he shot it wide. Had some juice behind it. Now Fontaine out of the box. It's a five on four for another 25 seconds. Tory Mitchell will clear it. 15-5 the shots, but a 1-0 lead, and the Sharks looking to capitalize here with Minnesota in all this penalty trouble here in the first period. They've done so once. Here's Wingles, over to Hurdle, he scores! Tomas Hurdle, a power play goal, it's 2-0. Well, Tommy Wingles, he just made up for going offside in the previous power play. Sealing the boards, stopping the clear, getting it over with a great pass to Tomas Hurdle. He's got a terrific release, goes upstairs, beats Backstrom on the blocker's side. Quick shot to the net. B unit comes out. B unit only because they're coming out after the top guys. And the kid gets back on the board. The Sharks get the 2 0 lead. Everybody smiles. But the key is, don't play to the score. Don't play like it's 2 nothing. You got to keep playing like it's 0 0. Tomas Hurdle continues to lead all rookies in points. That's point number 24. Leads all rookies in goals with 15 and leads all Sharks in goals with 15. The key is on that play is that Tommy Wingle seals the boards. And Tomas Hurdle, very happy about that. His points to. Tommy Wingle says, good pass, kid, way to go. Talking to Joe Thornton today about Tomas Hurdle, because he's kind of slid off a little bit in his play. Joe said it's it's kind of normal. You know, it's hard for a young guy to come in and continue to play at this pace and play all those important minutes and continue to produce. He said, all we're doing right now, talking about Brent Burns and, and him, Joe Thornton, they're just talking to the guy, just trying to make sure he keeps his confidence up. Big shift here for the Sharks as Minnesota with possession. Clayton Stoner sends it back behind the net. Pominville looking for Stoner and the shot there. A battle between Desjardins and Koivu. That allows Niemi to make a routine glove stop. The kid gets goal number 15. Sharks with two on the power play. Sharks Hockey on Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Try the new Fajita Ranch Melt for only $3.99 plus tax at a participating Jack in the Box near you. By Toyota, do the math and save at your local Toyota dealer. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. There's the captain and the kid. <laughs> Joe Thornton and Tomas Hurdle. It was funny today when I when I went to Joe Thornton to ask him about Tomas Hurdle. I said, I said, Joe, can I ask you about the kid? He goes, which one? I said, the one on your line. He goes, which one? <laughs> the big kid or the kid kid? I said, the kid kid. <laughs> like we said, the, the, you could call it the kid line. They're all they're all kids. But it was interesting. And Joe just said, you know, it's. He said, people don't understand when you're a young guy coming in this league, it's really really tough to keep it consistent throughout the whole season. Here's Danny Heatley. Only number 15 for Minnesota. There. It's going to be a, a cross check to Jason Demers as he puts the cross check on Brett Bulmer, who just draws his first penalty of the game. So here, why? Five sounds You eight. don't want cross your stick check. on the numbers. I don't understand why defensemen or anybody, when you're playing in that situation, why you want to get your stick on the numbers. And that's exactly what Todd McClellan's talking to Jimmy Johnson about. Get your stick down on the ice to the puck. You don't need to put your stick up on the numbers because as soon as the guy feels that, he's going to go down and draw the penalty. So Balmer draws the penalty. He won't be on this first power play unit, though. Koivu and Pominville and Parisi and Spurgeon and Suter are, though. And here is Ryan Suter. Hands it back to the captain, Koivu. Down low. Spurgeon shot Niemi with a great save. That was labeled right on the goal line. The backdoor play, very nice by the Minnesota Wild. This is nice puck movement. Look, Zach Parisi slides out, gonna go low, backdoor. Spurgeon times it perfectly. 
But Niemi, stick down, look at the extension, gets across, and just squeezes. Everything squeezes. That puck just goes perfectly underneath the stick, off the pad, off the arm, sits just right on the goal line. Spurgeon throws his head back, but that's a dangerous, dangerous play by the Minnesota Wild. Some may say, okay, that's lucky, but no, it's not. That's positioning yourself to make a save by a goaltender. They practice that all day long. Exactly, you said the right word right there. Sharks offside here as they get it back in. Antti Niemi with goaltending coach extraordinaire and assistant general manager Wayne Thomas. They work on that particular play all the time where it's Antti Niemi is out facing the shot one way and then bang on the stick on the tap of the ice. He slides across, gets over, so extends to make the stop on another one-timer. Alex Daylock, of course, is involved in those drills as well. That's how those goaltenders are so good. Repetition, repetition, repetition. That was a great Vasily Tikhanov used to say that all the time. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Here's Suter, had to do some work to get it out of his own end. He's still not clear. Good forecheck and penalty kill ship for Logan Couture, who heads off now. 2-0, Sharks on top here in the first period. Minnesota with their first power play of the game. Suter at the point. He'll load up, and that one went wide. Parisi right to the net as well. This is a very good team in front of the net. Niemi has lost the stick. Yeah, and he tried to get it back from Brad Stewart. Now Niemi's got it. The puck comes out to center. Yeah, action by the Sharks bench as well. Just under a minute left on this Minnesota power play. Their power play, by the way, good. As you could tell, in the way they moved it around for that first chance. Eighth in the league. In their last 10 games, though, they've fallen off a bit. Three for their last 21. That's about 14%. But they are elite in front of the net. Good keep in by Gordine. But Erwin, right place, right time, and he gets it clear. Baxter going to help out Gordine here with the four-checker Nieto there as well. Fontaine for Charlie Coyle. Now to Danny Heatley. Back through for Coyle. He tried to bump it with the backhand for Fontaine, but couldn't get his stick on it. Comes back through the middle and down. 12 seconds to go. On this power play here in the first period for Minnesota. The heater crossing the line. Nowhere else to go after that. Danny Heatley coming into this game with six goals. In 33 games, that's the end of the power play as Demers steps back on. But Danny is a minus nine. Not going to sell very well here. With Danny Heatley. Scandella back over to Spurgeon. Parisi. The shot deflects off the net. Poivu playing it back. Going to get it. Pominville, he's checked by Vlasic. Parisi and Stewart having a battle. Somebody just lost the glove. Parisi picks it up quickly in traffic. Koibu, Pominville pulls the trigger. Parisi bumps it back to the net, and Niemi saw that bounce through, and he's got it covered. Hard battle along the boards, and we'll just show you from my angle, the big top angle, to keep it frozen right there. Go, right, guys, you can play this in real time if you want. These guys are just going to battle, battle, battle. And watch Parisi and Brad Stewart. This is what you've got to do. This is the compete level. But watch Parisi. Picks up his dump. Now he's going to win the race back to the front because Brad Stewart stopped. And he gets a dynamite chance because of it with a great skill knocking the puck out of the air. But Parisi is so good at those small area battles and then getting off and getting to the front of the net. Palmer with a quick shot off the face off and the Emmy with the save. And Havlat will send it back into the Minnesota zone. I gotta tell you, I just, I, I know, you know, we get messages throughout the game. I just got a message from my son Davis, who was a great Danny Heatley fan. He said, you can be minus nine when you got five in the uh, 06 All-Star game. <laughs> <laughs> Heatley a three-time All-Star. 50 and 07, bit. Here's Coyle. Niederreiter trying to turn it and fire it. Shot sorted out as Dan Boyle will send it down the ice. Boyle with an assist tonight. He had two here on Tuesday in the shootout loss. Braun, and that's a high one, just wide. Had something on it. Havlat behind the Minnesota net. Plays it out front just as Blasic dropped his stick. Tough timing there for those two. 
As Mitchell comes back and his shot is blocked by Vlasic. Oh my goodness, there's always a train wreck back there. Cook for Tory Mitchell. He turns without the puck, now back on it. As he gets a rough ride from Vlasic. Braun with a nice outplay to Wingles. Pavelski had lost his stick. He quickly grabs one off the bench. And now he'll bump it down into the Minnesota zone as we're under 20 seconds to go here in the first. Minnesota looking for a late push here as Cook gives it to Pominville. And a hard wrist shot. Miami fights it off. Sharks come back. Time running down. Couture with three seconds hits the post. Oh, Logan Couture snake bit for sure right now as he rings one off the goal post just as time expires. That might have been a backbreaker. But the Sharks do cash in twice on the power play as you see this shot. It would have counted off the crossbar behind Nicholas Backstrom, but it was not to be. Great poise by Logan Couture. At the end of a period here at SAP Center, it's the Sharks 2, the Minnesota Wild nothing. Stick around, we'll check in with Kate Longworth in our Sportsnet Central Studios. And then Brody Brazil is back to talk to the Sharks' Tommy Winkles. Center, thanks to the Sharks Foundation, holiday practice jerseys, and mystery pucks. When the Sharks are back home for their last two games before Christmas, December 21st, and then on the 23rd, special holiday practice jerseys that were worn during a morning skate and signed by the players will be up for auction here, and then they will have the mystery pucks for sale as well. For more information, go to sharksfoundation.org. Those holiday jerseys are snappy. Santa in the house, so is the big Pavelski. Leading us to our McDonald's true stories. Joe Pavelski, not just a Team USA candidate. As far as you're concerned, Parker, a slam dunk to make Team USA. A lot, no doubt about it. He's just, he's just too good. He's too smart, too good, too versatile. He can play any position you want him to play. He can play the wing, smart penalty killer, great on the power play, good one-timer. And if you remember back to last Olympics, was within a whisper of sending himself into a gold medal oblivion and being a hero for a country. Of course, not bad in the face-off circle as well. He was a little wistful talking about Tuesday night when he lost a big draw that led to a tying goal by the Islanders. But... That's part of the process in a long season. Everybody makes mistakes, and you learn from them, hopefully. And if Team USA has been watching this young man and the way his game has taken off and how good he is at defending, he is strictly as just a defender in the National Hockey League, he is absolutely one of the best. Team USA should definitely have Justin Braun on that radar. And I probably didn't word that correctly. Every time you lose a draw, did you make a mistake, or did the other player beat you in the draw? No, you made a mistake. It's your fault. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, was trying, I was trying to have his back there, but thank you for clarifying that. We are underway with the second period live here. It's all on him, baby. It's all on you, Pabs. There you go. That was Drew Remenda, D-R-E-W, who said that. In case the uh, Pavelski family is watching back in Wisconsin. Oh, they've tuned me out a long time ago. What are you talking about? But, you know, it, it, you bring up a good point uh, on those situations. You talk about it a lot, and the Sharks coaches talk about it a lot, too, that it's just not up to the centerman to win the, win the draw. And there's a lot of things in that lost draw that went into that goal being scored. I know for sure Mike Pavelski's watching tonight <laughs> back in Wisconsin. He wouldn't miss this show, would you, no, if no. you weren't on it? No way. Here's Charlie Coyle now, the Wild trying to get back in this game, down 2-0 on a pair of power play goals by Joe Pavelski and Tomas Hurdle in the first period. Here's Coyle. The spin move against Couture. Coyle lays it off down in the corner. Fontaine there, but so is Braun. Fontaine lost to stick. Braun can't quite clear it out. Past Niederreiter along the boards. Now Couture sends it back up toward Marlowe and Patrick. Will chip it clear. Now a race to the puck. Kennedy after it, but Scandella positioned himself well and then played it back up for Niederreiter. Nino Niederreiter takes a shot between the Sharks' defense. And recovers his own rebound. Brodeen at the line. He'll back away. Give for Brodziak. And his shot a weak one wide. Cook off the bench. Whips that to the net. 
And Burns will bank it hard off the boards and down into Minnesota territory. And they're going to call icing here when I thought Suter might have had a chance to touch that. You know, we saw Jason Demers with the, the stick up on the numbers. Watch Logan Couture here against Charlie Crow. Watch his stick. Out front, out front, out front. Getting out of the puck. Stick on puck. Look at stick. Influence. Use the stick to influence. Get it back. Take the stick away. Put the stick down. Take away his lane to net. Again, take away his lane to net with the stick. Use your stick on the puck as much as you can. Terrific job defensively by Logan. Miami with a save on the shot from the wing by Suter. And Coyle, not an easy guy to handle. He's 6'3", 221. And Couture did a nice job there against the bigger man. That's the hard thing to learn when you're when you're a player in, 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 in any league, but this league especially. Use your stick to your advantage. Get your stick on the puck. Thornton and Hurdle now as Tomas gets it flat, takes a shot, but it did not come off his stick well, and it was an easy grab for Backstrom as there's a little pushing and shoving and more pushing after the whistle. And Brent Burns gets in there right away to help out. The young kid on the line, Brent Burns, comes in, makes a grab on young Brett Ballmer. Tomas Hurdle, though, shooting the puck and then going the net. Brent Burns having a discussion with the linesman. Ballmer's another guy who's not small. 6'4", 212, from beautiful Prince George, British Columbia. Former second-round pick of the Wild, up from Iowa. But he was actually in British Columbia when they recalled him playing on the road in Abbotsford, so it was an easy trip from the Vancouver area to San Jose for Brett Balmer. To Balmy, San Jose. Beautiful. Compared to, I would imagine, Vancouver at this time of the year. Didn't check the weather, but there's a real good chance it was cloudy with the possibility of rain. Sharks going to draw a power play here as Jason Demers is shaken up after a high stick dropped him to the ice. As he skates slowly back to the Sharks bench, we'll have another Minnesota infraction. And this will be their fifth trip to the penalty box. As Zenit Kanapka goes. Minnesota number 28, double minor, four minutes for high sticking. So that drew blood, obviously, on Jason Demers. It wasn't his stick. It, it was his own. It, was, it wasn't Kanapka's stick. It was actually, I think it was Andrew Desjardins. Or is it, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's. Reminds of Fre Freddie Hamilton. It's not actually his stick. It's Freddie Hamilton's stick. Zenit Kanopka comes in. One more time. Watch Freddie Hamilton. He's going to get hit right here. Hamilton turns, and his stick comes down and catches Jason Demers. Zenit Kanopka's stick is right down on the ice. Wow, and it's a four-minuter. That's a bad call. Marlowe mishandles it at the that's, line. That's, that's got to be one where, where Toronto makes a phone call. And like the goal, that's got to be one where Toronto makes the phone call and says, hey, guys, that, that wasn't, that was the wrong stick. I, and I think it's this so is... so blatantly yeah, wrong. Yeah, and that's the argument where, you know, if you want to call it the coach's flag or whatever, use one of your timeouts to ask for a review. That would be a perfect example of where a coach would want to use it. And I, listen, I know the game happens fast and there's lots of things happening. Mike Yell, he deserves to be shaking his head and... and Surprised he's not just losing his mind right at the moment. It's a Todd McClellan look like behind Yo there. <laughs> it is actually. Not nearly as handsome as Todd, but certainly resembling him. How kind of you all of a sudden after your remarks about Pavelski. Here's Couture. Guy from <laughs> Saskatchewan, guy from Wisconsin. What do you want me to do? No, coach player. That's what that, uh, Canada, USA. Here's Thornton down at the goal line. Couture plays it back out for Boyle. It's Pavelski with a shot. It's blocked. He gets his own rebound, backdoors it to Boyle. Now Marlowe quickly to Pavelski up top. Good buck movement by the Sharks here now that they've got hold of it. And as I say that, they clear it out. People hate you. I'm in for <laughs> People just hate me in general. Here's Pavelski, and a save by Backstrom drops it. Thornton's right back on it. He's got Marlowe up front. Didn't have a clean shot. It's back to Boyle. And Mar uh, Thornton trying to pass that. It went off Cook's skate. Of course. Couture back down the boards for Thornton. Good stick by Brody. Havlat, that's a nifty pass to Couture. The shot comes through to Backstrom hard from Irwin, who can shoot it hard. Thornton at the side, Backstrom the save off Havlat. Now Irwin, he'll get it on target again. Loose puck, it's Pavelski, and it's three to nothing.
like to re-engage from the Sharks. They re-engage all the time to the net. Every time they recovered the puck, they were able to re-engage to the net. Good job by Martin Havlick. Shot to the net, wasting no time. Shot to the net, Baxter out, challenging. Good job by Martin Havlick to get there, cause some problems. Dan Boyle just lets it go. And Joe Pavelski with those sure hands gets his second goal of the night. 21st career two goal game for the big Pavelski and the Sharks are three for five on the power play and because they scored with over two minutes left on the four minute power play they've got a full two minutes again. Irwin to Havlap to Wingles with speed down the wing against Clayton Stoner. Hurdle will help it's on its way to Irwin. Now Matt Irwin deep for Wingles. He'll flick it back for Tomas Hurdle. Havlat getting worked at the front of the net by Ballard. Burns off to Hurdle. Havlat as Wingles was knocked down. Burns leans into one. Wingles turns and tries to shoot. There's one that got through Backstrom, but off his skate wide. And now Stoner will get a chance to clear for the Wild. First clear they've had in a while. Very good chance right there. With the aggressive attack mentality. Three nothing Sharks a minute to go on this power play. The Sharks sixth power play already in the game. Boyle knocked from his stick by Scandella. Good recovery and Couture denied by Backstrom. That's nice. Aggressive on the entry. Again, attack the net every chance you get. Dan Boyle brings it in. He's going to bobble a little bit. It's a nice stick by Marco Scandella, but the Sharks recover. Joe Thornton, great support by Patrick Marlowe. The key is penetrating the zone and getting the support. Joe Pavelski, most go games with two power play goals in franchise history. One away from tying Chichu and Marlowe, who each had seven. Of course, in Marlowe's case, still active. Chichu active, but in the KHL. Thornton, back for Boyle up top. Now Thornton again, far side. Here's Couture, Backstrom with the save. Puck still loose, and it bounces back to Joe Thornton. He'll fire and it's blocked. Couture again, that's blocked. Back to the front, Marlowe's shot deflects high. And Brodziak now for Minnesota, but he can't get it out. Back to Marlowe, 15 to go on the power play. Thornton. Couture, and oh. off a stick and out of play. Was it Backstrom's stick? It was Backstrom's, Backstrom's stick, and you're right. Snake bit could be a word for Logan Couture right now. This is an amazing save if it's Backstrom like I think it is. Terrific puck movement. The one-timer across Backstrom. Big paddle across. Oh, my goodness me. Wow. Talk about battling in the net. Logan Couture all over it. What I like about Logan, though. Calm. He's not coming to the bench, slamming his stick. He's not shaking his head. He's just staying a professional. Knowing that if he keeps shooting, he keeps getting those chances, eventually they're going to come back to him and he's going to start scoring. Six seconds to go on the power play as Koivu goes to change sticks and perhaps give yep. everybody just a chance to settle down here a little bit for what is an important face-off for Minnesota here. That's a good-looking power play, though. Boy, that is, that's... What a, what a difference from the last time the Wild and the Sharks met. Sharks get it back to Vlasic, and that one was just wide. Just wide. And that's it for the extended power play, but the Sharks do their damage as Pavelski gets his 12th of the year and second of this game from Havlat and Irwin at 342. Now Koivu for Minnesota. Jason Pominville to Suter. Back around but out of the reach of Parisi. Rudin jumps in. Back to Koivu. His wrist shot blocked. Hamilton will play it up quickly for Desjardins. But it's back to the wild. 3-0 Sharks and they're out shooting Minnesota. 26-11. Certainly on pace for another close to 40 shot game like they had in St. Paul. When they had 38 shots on goal. Difference being, they've already scored three here. They only had, only had one that night. Clayton Stoner getting the puck flat. 
Puck's been bobbling a little bit tonight. There was a concert last night here. Jay-Z in the house. Were you uh, part of that group? <laughs> yeah, you know me. I'm a big hip-hop guy. But I am getting Jay-Z to negotiate my next contract for him. Good plan after what he did for Robinson Cano. He's going uh, to talk, contact the Sharks directly. I'll talk to him after the concert. Although it, it could have been... Never mind, I'll just leave it with that. <laughs> if you can get him to uh, do your deal, then you won't have 99 problems. <laughs> The big Pavelski, two big goals on the power play. Adam Burris joins us in the booth live when we come back to SAP Center. Dr. Dreamy coming in. Timing is perfect. Adam Burris, injured Sharks forward, joining us up here in the booth with the Sharks leading 3-0. How are you feeling, Adam? I'm feeling good. Well, I get to sit with you guys. Couldn't be much better, could no, it? Yeah, <laughs> right. Start it's, well, it could be. Down the there. one thing better would be down there. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling good, though. I'm getting better. Um, Mike Potenza and Ray and the trainers down there do an awesome job with us. And I'm getting better, getting closer. Going to skate tomorrow, so it's like an early, really? cri early Christmas gift for me. Oh, that is terrific. That's nice. Of course, awesome. Adam underwent back surgery yep. just before the start of the regular season. And working his way back into the lineup and he'll sit with us here for a bit during the second period with the Sharks up 3-0. All three of their goals on the power play on 18 power play shots. Nice to see that part of the game turning for the Sharks after the past few games. The last few days it's something the team's talked about. We work on it a lot. And you know what the big thing was? was just simplifying it. Getting pucks to the net and that's how we got to here for sure tonight. Just getting pucks on net. Kanapka now for the Wild. They've got to be thinking they need the next goal in this one as Stewart works behind the San Jose net. Taken by Danny Heatley back to the point for Suter. That's blocked before it got to Niemi's area and Hamilton will just tap it back out to center. Wild will get a change or two as Suter drifts back. Wisconsin boy. Absolutely. <laughs> there you go. A couple of them out there tonight. We were already talking about that tonight. The Wisconsin boy in uh, wearing number eight and Teal having a pretty good night. Yep. Maybe that's why my back was bad. I've been carrying around him, him around since college. So. <laughs> Sore back. Adam, for old guys like us, back issues are something that just go with the territory. But did you have any back issues before this incident that happened in the preseason? No, never. I never really even had a sore back. I never, you know, a guy that, you know, I don't need heat to warm up before games or practice. So it was nothing. It was just kind of a goofy play in the first preseason game. And I guess an unlucky thing and a, a disappointing time to get hurt. Have you ever been in a situation where you've been out for, for this long a time? I, I did once in Chicago. I did my ACL with Rafi Torres is going through now. And, um, but that was it. Uh, again, both times it's, it's similar that it's, a, it's, it's boring as heck. I can't tell you how bored I am. Yeah. Yeah. Except when the broadcasts are on, of course. <laughs> you guys are making my day right now. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for breaking my day up for me. Adam Burris joining us live up here in the booth as the Sharks are ahead of the Minnesota Wild 3-0. We're approaching the midway point of the second period. A chance for the Wild. And that shot rattles wide off the boards. It comes back to Koivu. Top line on for Minnesota here. That pass headed Parisi's way, but the Sharks take care of business in front of their own net and Suter all the way back now. What do you think about the upcoming Olympics uh, as far as Team USA chances are? I think they'll be great. I mean, you saw what they did four years ago, and um, you'd think that they're going to have a lot of the same team. I think you know, goaltending is going to be good again. Um, get, get another Wisconsin, a couple of Wisconsin guys in Suter and, and Pavelski for sure on that team. And I think they're going to be dangerous again. It should be, it'll be exciting. There's Tomas Hurdle recovering to Thornton behind the net. Joe looks out front. Burns is there. So is Boyle. And it gets through to Backstrom, but he's able to cover it up. Getting to the net. Well, speaking of Team USA, the upcoming Olympics in Sochi, Russia in February. General Manager David Poyle, head coach Dan Balsam of the Pittsburgh Penguins, who we recently saw on the last road trip. The team will be named on January 1st in Ann Arbor at the Big House in the Winter Classic game, and then they open up against Slovakia on February 13th. How do you like the Slovakians, Adam? You know what? Uh, you put me on the spot here. I don't know a whole lot about it. <laughs> Neither do we. They got cool looking jerseys though. Yeah, there you go. Very nice looking jerseys. Here's Charlie Coyle and he pulls the trigger. Missed the puck. Hit Irwin. Now Niederreiter in the corner as Nieto plays it up the boards. That's kept in by Brodine. Back to Fontaine. Now over to Suter. Suter wants Fontaine, that hit Boyle, and drops for Wingles to clear, and he does. Something interesting happened while we had the graphic up is that 
we were shown, the three of us were shown on the big screen here at SAP Center. And for the first time while we were on the big screen, Randy, there was a cheer went up from the females in the audience. I wonder why that didn't really happen there. Well, normally that's they're not booing. It's Drew. No, they're, I don't they're, think they're, so. They're chanting they're in going, unison. They were going, burr. I think they like your tie tonight. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate that. But I don't think that's what they're looking at. Turnover. Shot in the Emmy. Kicks out the left pad and makes the save. Okay, we've seen the Sharks do this, Adam. Get in the lead, and then all of a sudden the other team puts a little push on, and the Sharks seem to be standing still. What, what well, happens? It, it's not something we haven't noticed. I know just from being around and being in the locker room, guys, they have talked about it. The coaches have addressed it. So it's not something that, that we're not aware of that either. And uh, maybe it's a mindset a lot of times. It's just it, it, sometimes it's human nature. When you're up a couple goals, you relax and get comfortable. But, uh, you know, elite teams and the top teams in this league, you can't get comfortable. You can't sit back. And I guess we've learned some, you know, some valuable lessons the last two games not to let this happen again. I don't think it will tonight. Koivu, Spurgeon, far side. They had the setup they wanted, not the execution. Did Jason Demers take that away? I think he did. I think he did too. But it was another change in the neutral zone where, like in Minnesota, Minnesota came back with a four on two and scored. It was a bad change there as well. Steal by Marlowe. Now the Sharks try and make it something happen through the neutral, but can't. And, and I'm sure on the bench when you're in a situation like this, you're getting constant reminders from the coaching staff about what you need to do to, to change things in a, what's been a problematic period for the Sharks all year. Right. It, you know, it's, a lot of times, like I said, it, it's just simplifying it, you know, and it's not making a fancy play. It's not trying to, it's what we did in the first two periods was getting pucks to the net, get simple. And, you know, confidence is a goofy thing in sports. And the last four games, so, you know, you, we can sense we've lost some confidence keeping leads, winning games, late in the games, winning face-offs. It's a confidence thing, and a lot of times to get back to your confidence, you just simplify it. Go back to those things that you've done to be successful. And the good thing with this team is we've done so many of those things that we've got a lot to kind of look back on and lean on. The interesting thing is, too, though, when, when that type of stuff is happening, I know most, most fans would think that there's a lot of talk going on on the bench. It's the exact opposite, isn't it? It's, it's, it's actually you try and get calmer. Right. When, when the game gets hectic and you, you feel like you're giving some heat and the team's putting some pressure on you, a lot of times it's, hey, let's take a deep breath here. Let's relax. Uh, let's let's figure out what situation we're in and let's figure out how to get out of it or how to get back into you know playing the way we want to play so it's, you're right it, yeah. it, it gets it gets calmer down there than you would think it's these broadcasters up here getting all excited you guys are the ones do the screaming <laughs> sharks forward adam burris joining us live up here in the booth at sap center sharks with power play goals and three of them as wingles went down there and he's a little slow to get back to the san jose bench Pavelski with two of those on the power play. Hurdle the other. Hamilton in first for the Sharks. Nieto couldn't keep it in with a glove, and it's back to Ballmer. The challenge Matt Irwin. Ballmer with Cook. Cook to Brodeen. Now Keith Ballard trying to pass that off the boards to Brodziak. Now Cook gets a bump from Pavelski. Ballard on this side. His shot partially blocked by Havlat. Now Brodziak down low against Boyle. Bomer. Brodziak holding the stick of Dan Boyle. He's trying to get the referee's attention. Dan was. Cook releases to Bomer again. Good stick there by Irwin. And he starts when he gets it back up in the numbers. See? Get it down on, this, on the ice, on the puck. Bomer trying to sweep it in front. Here it comes to Ballard. And that one hit. Brodzi or Cook in front. Ballard back on it. And Sharks do have it cleared now. To Havlat at center, and he'll send it into the wild zone. Ooh, they called icing there. Really? Wow. And watch, watch Zach Parise here. This is why Tommy Wingles got hurt. If you just want to hold it for a sec, guys, we'll just highlight it. There you go. This is illegal, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot slew foot somebody in this game. Nah, that's, that hurts. That's why it goes down hard. It goes on hard on the tailbone. Watch. Leg behind, stick over top. That's that's a penalty. That's a penalty, right? Yep. That hurts, too. It, it does. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. You go down hard, and you've got you've got nothing to protect you. Just boom. Tommy Wingles standing up going, yep. anything? Todd McClellan calling the timeout right now. When these timeouts happen, what's happening down there? You know what? A lot of times it's it's catch your breath, and yeah. then they'll go over what we're going to do on a win and on a loss. Yeah. 
uh, which is quick. Everybody knows their responsibilities, what you do on a win, what you do on a loss. You make sure we're all on the same page, and then it's catch your breath. That's why you took the time out is because these guys have been out there for a while. They're tired, so let's catch our breath. Let's figure out our plan here. Let's go. So it's all a matter of just, again, like you said, just calming things down. Yep. We're tired. Everybody's tired. Um, you know, things are moving fast. So let's just take a second. Let's breathe, and we'll, we'll get out of this. Sharks are out shooting the wild right now, 30 to 14. But Minnesota's come on here for the last seven or eight minutes of this second period. Looking to break through against Antti Niemi, who's been perfect on 14 saves. Pavelski and Pominville standing in for this faceoff. Pavelski ties up Pominville's stick. Good job to win that draw. And Hablak will well, have some trouble getting it deep. Still having trouble getting it deep. And it never really got as deep as the Sharks wanted, but they got enough personnel off the ice. Now back to Havlat, and it's in. There you go. So a well-used timeout by Todd McClellan. Koivu, trouble once he got to the Shark line. It bounces to Hurdle. Tomas will send it up for Thornton. Hurdle with his team leading 15th goal this year. Did you see that coming in training camp from Tomas Hurdle? I didn't see it coming like it like it's been coming, but uh, you could see his his skill before training camp started in our little shinny games that we play with the guys. Uh, you could sell you could tell he had some little flashes of you know, some stuff that just makes you shake your head. So you know he had some ability, but you never know until you put a 19-year-old kid in an NHL hockey game what he's going to do, how he's going to react. And I think Sharks fans can be pretty excited with what they've seen. This is Hurdle with the puck, and he played it right up the middle for Couture, but it took a bounce off a wild stick. Never seen anything quite like that four-goal game or the way he uh, finished it off with the fourth. No, oh, that was cool. That was awesome. I loved it. You know, other, my buddies around the league, I know there was some controversy. Should he have celebrated, whatever. My buddies and other hockey guys around the league loved it. All the guys. Niemi with a nifty glove save there off the rebound. We want to thank Adam Burris for being with us. You're going to start skating tomorrow? Tomorrow. All right. That's awesome. Merry pre-Christmas with that gift, and we'll look forward to seeing you back in the Sharks lineup sooner than later. Adam Burris joining us up here in the broadcast booth. The Sharks leading the Wild 3-0 here in the second period on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Management, players, coaches, broadcasters, staff hosted their annual holiday assist party for families in the Bay Area that just need that little extra bit of help around the holiday time. You see the great Dan Rusinowski, Jamie Baker there. There's Rafi Torres. Everybody in attendance. And I'll tell you, the Sharks players represented themselves so well again, as they always do in these events. But also the Sharks wives. Yeah. The Sharks wives, they're the ones that go out and, and do the shopping. And, and the Sharks organization does a great job. There's so many volunteers that help that out. But the, the Sharks wives in this, they really put a lot of work in making sure they get the right gifts as well. Good for them. They all show up, and it's it's a you know. And you know what, Drew? They they don't just show up. They're yeah, they're right. there early. Yeah. They're engaged with the families. They they dine with them. They take them to where their gifts are under the tree. Sure. And you know what else they do? They walk them back to their cars, pack up the trunk with the gifts, and 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 pat them on the back or shake their hand or give them a hug. It, it's door-to-door uh, -door service from these guys. They don't just show and go. I was there. I. I can vouch for every one of them. <laughs> nice job by the uh, the Sharks organization and Jeff Kafura and the Sharks Foundation. Jeff runs that thing and does such a super job with that holiday assist party. Among the many events that the Sharks Foundation put on. Good. Oh, good stand up by Brad Burns. Here's penalty. Fontaine, going to be a penalty to the Sharks. Fontaine skates in. Fontaine trying to get around for a shot. It's right at the corner of the post, and the Emmy pushes across. And now the puck covered up, but there will be a Minnesota power play. Be a holding penalty. I thought maybe Brent Burns on a little bit of a that stand up late in the offensive zone, but no, it's going to be back a little bit further. Let's listen in for uh, the call. San Jose 48 holding. Tomas Hurdle going to get the hold. Go ahead and roll this, guys. I think this is Tomas right here. Go ahead and roll it. Tomas coming in. Coming in. Yeah, a little that's, tug. That's the call right there. Yep. Hand off the stick. Grab the shoulder. And the way this game's gone, too, it's, it's just inevitable it's going it to factor in. Yeah. When one team has three power play goals on six tries, 
Anything close is going to get called. That's just the way it works. But you don't get that two minutes off. You've got to, even, even though you may not agree with the call, you've got to make sure that you kill it off. The Sharks' power play has done their job. The penalty killers now have to go to work, and that's what it is. It's work, but work smart. So Suter now on the second Minnesota power play of the game. All three Sharks goals with the man advantage, two from Pavelski and one from Hurdle. Parisi, as you might guess, leading power play goal getter for Minnesota. He's got seven. That's the third best in the league. And that broken stick belonging to Andrew Desjardins, but he doesn't have a broken hand. He's able to get to the puck, and he just bats it down the ice with a puck. Smart play. Very heads up play. Having an impact on your way to the bench. Parisi back up top. Spurgeon sets it up for a shot off the net. Koivu recovering it. Now back over to Suter. Spurgeon. Koivu, one-timer blocked by Stewart. And his stick breaks off at the handle as he tried to clear. Here's a chance for Minnesota. Parisi to the net. They get it back to Koivu. He'll go back over to the other side. Parisi back to Koivu to Suter. And his stick breaks. Wow. Not an advertisement right now for the stick companies. Especially if they're all from the same one. <laughs> Here's uh, Provenville. Suter quickly gets a new one. Provenville shot saved by Niemi and kept in nicely at the blue line by Spurgeon. Suter to Jared Spurgeon. Koivu down low. And Parisi's pass hits a skate back to Suter. He'll shoot, went upstairs, missed high, drops out in front. Another puck glove to the line, but not out that time by Couture. Here's Koivu, penalty over. Coming into the play is Hurdle. Pass across for Pominville. Now he gets it back to the blue line. Sure, we got pressure here. Suter, Pominville, Koivu, and the enemy got a piece of that with the blocker. Again clear with the glove, but not out by Couture. With a mess in front. Koivu, shot, missing the net was Pominville from that far side. Actually, it was, yeah, it was Pominville. And the Sharks get the clear, and Hurdle no back to beat out the icing. What a sequence. What a penalty kill shift. Some great chances for Minnesota. It's a bend, don't break right there. Except if you're a stick. Here is Minnesota's Charlie Coyle, and it comes back out to Burns. Hurdle now to center, and he'll lob it deep. Well done, my boy. Well done. Still 3-0. Two minutes to go here in the second period. The fans got really excited. They understood some good penalty killing work. Here's Heatley in alone, and he tried to pass. He had Fontaine, but it didn't click, obviously. Minnesota's picked up some momentum in this second half of the second period and on this power play. Well, that's the end of the power play. Quick up pass for Freddie Hamilton. He'll slide it in past Scandella, but the Sharks are offside. Oh, hit the linesman. And we will take a break. A minute and a half left to go here in the second period. The Sharks with a 3 nothing lead. Sticks, boys and girls. Andrew Desjardins tries to clear. Stick breaks as Jared Spurgeon jumps in. Trying to clear Brad Stewart. Stick breaks on the shaft just after he blocks the shot. Ryan Suter, big one-timer. Stick snaps in half. And then when Brad Stewart's stick is broken, Logan Couture does the right thing. The forward right choice. Hand your stick to D-man. Brad says, get it out of my way. I'm busy right now. So what does Logan do? Drops it right in front of the net. The forward right choice. Dropping the stick. Picking it up. Blocking the shots. Getting it out. Getting the good kill. And everybody, take a breath. As the San Jose Sharks, Logan Couture... And Brad Stewart, a little chuckle with it. Getting the Ford right choice for using your stick the right way. So the Sharks out of the <laughs> penalty kill jam, and we're back to five on five here with a minute and a half to go in the second period. And a strong second period for the Sharks. A goal and some excellent penalty killing as we just saw. Just a different level of battle in this period that we've seen from the Sharks in some other second periods that haven't gone their way. Wingles, and that's picked up by Cook. Look at Nieto come back and interfere with things in the neutral zone. 
Niemi with a save. It's off the glass far side. Back down to Pavelski. And now Matt Nieto comes over the line. Takes his shot. Saved by Backstrom. Nieto following the rebound behind the net. But he was angled off the puck by Brodziak. As Matt Cook gives it to Jared Spurgeon. Gets it back. Across to this side for Bomer. Bomer can't get it away from Pavelski. Who's then popped by Cook. Puck behind the net. Demers there to clean it up for the Sharks. It's it settled on his stick. But then it goes off a of San Jose skate. Ricochets to center. Brodeen into the shark zone, part of this young defense. Brodeen, Scandella, Spurgeon, Prosser, Stoner, Suter, they're all under 30. Young, Wild, and D, with apologies to Snoop Dogg and the great Wiz Khalifa. Demers back behind the net. What's that? I think he thought it was an icing. He did it. He's up there, didn't he? Yeah, he just kind of backed up. It looked like Nancy Miami was indicating he was going to be an icing. Have a chance late. Marlowe with a shot just before the buzzer. That will do it for 40 minutes of professional men's ice hockey here in San Jose. And a solid 20 minutes for the Sharks in the second. They get to Backstrom one more time. Another power play goal. And after two, it's the Sharks three, the Wild nothing. Stick around. We'll check in with Kate Longworth in our studio in San Francisco. Then Drew and I will be back with Sharpshooters. Back here live at SAP Center, Brody Brazil joined by Sharks assistant coach Jay Woodcroft. We could talk about the power play goals, but how about the way you guys are even getting on the power play and a certain style for you that's drawing these penalties? What is that? Yeah, well, Brody, I would say that it's a credit to our players, first of all. I think we lead the league in, in power play opportunities, and it really does go to our style. We want to be fast and hard, and when we're doing that and on our attacking mindset, we draw a lot of penalties. That's a credit to the players, and tonight they've really worked on... Uh, making those power plays count. Normally a 3-0 lead may not be a test for your team, but considering where you guys have been recently, is this? Well, we need the two points. Um, it's a big two points for us tonight. We're putting it on our leadership to lead the way here by making good decisions with the puck through the neutral zone, ensuring that we make their defense turn, and let's grind them down below their goal line. And any type of breakout they have to make has to come 200 feet. Jay, good luck. Thanks, Brody. Randy and Drew? Well, Jay Woodcroft is the guy who, although all, every, all the coaches are involved in everything, Jay's concentrates on the power play. So after this power play has been struggling for a while and they, they put a lot of work into it, uh, Jay's got to be pretty happy right now. But the great thing about this coaching staff, and, and Jay really epitomizes it, the amazing attention to detail. Right off the puck drop, puck back deep in wild territory again, but it's out to Jason Pominville. And now the Wild will try and manufacture a comeback. Staying out of the penalty box might help them as Niemi catches this. Our great statistician John Bonacera points out Minnesota with 18 shots on goal until that last one. The Sharks have 18 shots on the power play alone in this game. Good stat, Johnny. Now remember, Mike Yell would have said to his team, would have talked to his team about the New York Islanders come back against the Sharks. Islanders scored in the first minute, scored in the last minute, so... They would have been talking about one shot, guys. One shot's all you need. Something like John Tavares said to his team when they headed out. So the Sharks want to have a good start like they did in the first period in this, on the start of this third period. Islanders, by the way, lost the last game of that road trip tonight in Phoenix. Big win for the Desert Dogs. Here's Parisi now as it's into the Sharks zone. Early third period here. And that one's up into the screen. There was a scoring change on the second Pavelski goal. It is now Pavelski from Irwin and Thornton. Take an assist away from Martin Havlat. So that's two assists tonight for Joe Thornton. Give Havlat an assist, though, for standing in the front. For sure. Pretty good job there. Matt Irwin with his fifth assist of the season. And Joe Thornton with his 29th among the league leaders. Pavelski back defensively to Irwin. Now it's played by Nieto up for Wingles. Wild get it back. Jared Spurgeon up for Cook. He's checked by Wingles as he got rid of the puck. Now it's turned over by Brodziak to Nieto. Matt Nieto paddles a backhander to the goal and Backstrom with the glove save. So, a couple things here. Quick puck movement, 
quick puck movement, but also the pinch coming down the wall. Go ahead and roll it, guys. So how do you beat that? Watch Tommy Wingles coming across. Look at that. Present your stick, present your stick, come across, chip it out, and then get up the ice as quick as you can. Quick puck movement, short little passes. That's how you beat it. Great support off the puck. One of our Lexus keys to the game, support of hockey. Great job by Tommy Wingles right there. And nice, fast puck movement by the Sharks. Minnesota came in with the fourth best team goals against in the NHL. They average only 2.21 goals against, but the Sharks have already better that with a third goal as Hurdle now is held from behind by Stoner and there'll be a power play. First Brad Stewart with a shot deflected off a skate. Back to Stewart again. This one on target but Backstrom with the catch and now we'll have another San Jose power play. Clayton Stoner going to the Bay Alarm penalty box. He's going to get the holding penalty. Minnesota number four, two-man minor, holding. And see how Tomas builds the wall. He kind of shifts his body, starts skating with his face pointed towards the glass, then cuts his shoulder back in tight, gets inside on Stoner, and Stoner reaches out with the one hand on the stick, and then off the stick, and on the body. And assistant coach Jay Woodcroft alluded to it in his conversation with Brody Brazil. Urgency draws penalties, and the Sharks have had a definitely different level of urgency in their game so far tonight as was witnessed right there as Hurdle draw, draws the minor on Stoner for the hold. Sharks on their seventh power play. Pavelski shot deflected. Now Marlowe to Thornton. Patrick Marlowe almost lost it to Matt Cook. Then Thornton almost lost it to Ryan Suter. Back to Thornton and Suter will pick it from him. Kyle Brodziak with the clear. Yemi plays that off the oh. boards rather delicately, and it's on the stick of Matt Gunn. And he'll just lob it back toward his own blue line. Charts will change up their power play. Boyle, trying to keep it away from Poy, who couldn't. Here's a chance for Mitchell all alone on the break, and saved by Niemi. And a great shorthanded chance for the former Shark, Tory Mitchell. Back come the Sharks over the line. Wingles. He'll curl back, plays it for Burns, Koivu with a good stick, and the Wild get it back. Why not, when you get the puck on the side, you've got that attack going there. Don't be thinking automatically, i got to turn it back and set up. Be aggressive towards net, that's why they were so successful in the first and second period with the power play. Hurdle gets it in, and gets it back. Now to Irwin, that's straight to the net. Reflected wide on a tip as Suter. Will drive it to center. It drops right to Kyle Brodziak with Cook, short-handed. Cook will chip it back. Brodziak again, right out front. Nobody there in white, but Martin Hatlight is there for the Sharks. Not realizing Wingles had fallen, he wheeled it back, and it's turned over to Brodziak. A little lack of communication out there, I think, right now. Now a turnover off Marlowe's stick. Here's a shot by Parisi off the glove of Niemi. Penalties over as Stoner jumps on. And the Wild with not only a good penalty kill, they got chances. No shots on that power play. Parisi to the net, caught by Niemi, wow. ahead of Kanopka. Now for the San Jose Sharks coaching staff, those are two forgettable minutes, without a doubt. Turnover by the Sharks in their own zone on the power play. Comes right back as the Sharks completely overcommit and leave an opportunity for a Tory Mitchell stopped. And then a drive to the net by Pominville. But look at Antiniemi cut that off. There's a guy reading the play. Antiniemi gets out, cuts it off before Palmerville can get inside to the puck. But the Sharks have got to just get back to playing the game that they were playing before. Another broken stick on the slap shot by Scandella. So in there in the stick factory. We'll have our people check the Sharks record for broken sticks by both teams in a game. Shot by Koivu, blocked. Kennedy, trying to get it out. Koivu keeps it in. Back to the net they go. Parisi, and Kennedy's going to take a penalty for hooking Zach Parisi. Probably had to take that penalty, but he took that penalty because he was the one that didn't get the puck out. And, and we've seen this now for... for San Jose number 81, Meyer penalty for hooking. For quite a bit of time now, last few games, there's the hook. Well, that taking it on Parisi in that situation is not a bad penalty, but we've seen this from the Sharks 
now in the last number of games where they start to struggle with their game with the lead. Finding a way to close out games. Something Tom McClellan talked about way back in the preseason. Early in the season he talked about this. And like Adam Burris told us, confidence is a funny thing for a, for a hockey player in this game. And right now the confidence, the Sharks trying to close it up, but they're trying to hold on instead of playing the way they've got them the 3-0 lead. Here's Koivu, Parisi off his skate. Back to Parisi again. In with a stick is Pavelski. And nicely done as Marlowe has it. He'll send it up the boards, chase it down himself, but Spurgeon has it for Minnesota. On for Suter. Come across the line, it's off the boards and around to Parisi on this side. Now all the way to Suter. He'll take a shot, knocked down by Niemi. Rebound, Niemi's got it. Parisi able to get to it on the loose puck. Now Pominville, it bounces around right to the feet of Antti Niemi, and he covers it up. Brad Stewart's having a warrior of a game. Brad Stewart took this shot up high as it went to the net, and then scrambled back at Don Henderson and having a talk with Parisi and Tommy Wingles. They love to establish the shot early. There's the shot. Brad Stewart fronting the puck without a doubt, then diving for it, even though it took him high. Antti Niemi battling. Now the Sharks going to have to just collapse. Just collapse back and try to... Whoa, Jason Demers with a tackle. Wow. Check out the tackle by Demers in front. Scramble at the net, scramble. They're a very good net front team, the Minnesota Wild. And as it scrambles, there's Demers getting on top of Jared Spurgeon, the defenseman who jumps in. And Spurgeon has that terrific timing. Oh, Antti Niemi being very good there as well. It's just a, a team that can get the puck to the net, Minnesota, and do good things with it when they get there. Pavelski, good battle in the circle with Coyle. Ballard can't keep it in. And now back at his own blue line, Brodeen. That's a good battle level by Joe Pavelski getting the puck up. When you beat Minnesota, you've got to be able to do the work along the boards, the heavy work. Classic gets this all the way down. Under a minute to go now on the Kennedy Minor. Koivu out the right side. Pominville back four. Nico Koivu, the captain of the Wild. Parisi. Scandella challenged by Nieto. It's off to Suter, but a little behind him. He was on his way to the net. Now the one-timer blocked by Stewart. Desjardins comes ahead with Nieto. Two on two, shorthanded. Trying to get it through Suter and up there for Nieto. But it's blocked, and now Koivu back the other way for Minnesota on the tail end of this power play. Suter. Takes a hard bounce off his stick. Now Stoner. Back up for Pominville. Stoner again. Jason Pominville. Koivu back to Pominville. Penalty over. There's the pass. Suter unable to get the shot away. As Tyler Kennedy out of the penalty box has it again for the shot. Like that backdoor play though, won't they? Follow it. Shot a couple of times on their three power play opportunities so far tonight. 0 for 3 as the Sharks maintain their 3-0 lead. Two power play goals for Joe Podolsky. Another power play goal for Tomas Hurdle. Nowhere to go for Burns on the Heatley back check. Now it's underneath Danny Heatley. Squirts out to Thornton. Joe to Burns. One-timer saved by Backstrom. Vlasic right back to the net. Backstrom slides it back behind the net. Looked like he was trying to cover that. Yeah, Hurdle was there. Thornton. Up top with Braun, they get it sorted out on a nice feed. Here's Braun stick handling. All the way back behind the Wild net. And now Keith Ballard able to get control for the Wild with 12.40 left here in the third. Sharks leave tomorrow for a three-game road trip. They'll play at Nashville, St. Louis, and then at L.A. before returning home for a game here on the 21st. Pat Ladd around for Pavelski. Holds off Stoner. Now to Wingles and the save by Backstrom. Wingles working against Stoner and Cook. Supported by Havlat. Good shifts now for the Sharks. Starting to do what they want to do. Get the puck in deep. Get a four check going. Some sustained offensive zone time. Forcing an icing right here. 
And some tired defenders out there for Minnesota. Why is Justin Braun so good? Watch his skating right here. He's going to kind of get a dead end pass right here with Heatley in close. One, two steps. Now he's going to just accelerate, create an opening for himself. In about two feet of space, he makes ten feet of space because of his exceptional skating. Demers back for Marlowe. At the side, the shot by Couture, saved by Backstrom. A nice play. Now Marlowe into the corner. Couture again on it, back for Patrick Marlowe. He's going to skate past Matt Cook. Leaves it on the boards for Demers. Now to Stewart. Back over to Marlowe on the other side. Covering a lot of ground, Patrick Marlowe on this ship. Stewart, and his stick broke. Never seen that before. That is the eighth broken stick in this game. The record for combined broken sticks in a Sharks home game is 13. Back in 2007. Here's Suter with a shot that's blocked. Irwin chased down by Niederreiter. And it's back to Brodeen. That's amazing how you have that stat. We've got people all over that. You think we don't keep track of everything? I know you do. Suter a one-timer. Niemi the save. No rebound. Smart with Nieder Ryder right in the crease. We'll be back. Zach Parisi. Well, this is just one heck of a hockey player. He's got... NHL hockey in his blood, and Randy, this guy is one of the best there is. His dad, JP, who uh, interestingly pronounces it Parise, yeah. uh, but Zach prefer, uh, prefers Parise. The old Minnesota North Stars, before they moved to Dallas, but they wear the same number, 11, and really a homecoming for Zach when he had the opportunity to sign with the Wild as a free agent. Absolutely, and of course, Zach played for Larry Robinson when Larry was coaching in New Jersey. Oh, Nino Niederreiter went down hard. He's right off the faceoff. Some, some body contact. And he just kept the puck in to Fontaine. Fought off by Niemi. And oh, here is Fontaine overskating it. Don't underestimate the play of Antti Niemi in this game, especially in this third period. He's made 25 saves this evening. That shot gap has been closed. No doubt. A couple of big ones in the first period, too. And we've seen... Oops. Brodeen... And the Emmy, the blocker save. Mitchell, he had a shorthanded chance earlier. Kanopka scoops one to the goal. And the Emmy's got that as well. Well, football fans know to turn to Comcast Sportsnet for 49er in-depth coverage every day and also online. Plus, it's also the authentic post-game show of 49ers post-game live. Tampa Bay next up for the Niners. This Sunday, on the road in Florida. We'll be on the road on Sunday in St. Louis after the game in Nashville on Saturday night. A couple days off in St. Louis. Always a pleasure to be in the Gateway City. Music City, Gateway City. The city of broken dreams. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, sorry, no. I'm sorry, I wasn't. I'm just trying to be part of the... Part of the fun. Hollywood, baby. Okay, sorry. Here's Hamilton for the Sharks. And that deflects off Danny Heatley and out of play. We will step aside halfway through this third period. Sharks maintaining their 3 0 lead. <laughs> Talking about the Sharks' upcoming schedule. Here's the calendar. Saturday will be in Music City, 4.30, pregame live from Nashville, then on to the Gateway City on Tuesday, also 4.30, and then the City of Angels, a week from tonight, 7 o'clock, our pregame. There's no better road night when you're in your heavenly bed in the City of Angels. Oh, wow. That should be a commercial. Hopefully the Sharks will have a prayer that night. <laughs> wow. You are on fire, my friend. Back to hockey now as Matt Nieto sends it back behind the net for Tommy Wingle. Sharks working on maintaining this three-goal lead here in the third against the Minnesota Wild. These teams will hook up one more time back here in January. Just a little bit before the Olympics on the 25th. Of course, by then, we'll have known the Olympic rosters for a good three weeks. Team USA to announce on January 1st at the Winter Classic. Team Canada a week later on January 7th. 
Matt Nieto, good speed, but he just couldn't get to the hash marks in time there. And the icing call draws a boo from the sellout crowd here at SAP Center. Well, that's what Matt, Matt one of the, the big keys that Matt Nieto brings is that speed. He is just fleet of foot and he gets on his horse right away. It doesn't take him very long. What I like about Matt that he's active off the puck. He's thinking off the puck. He's he's moving. He's supportive. One of our Lexus keys to the game. One of the guys that a prime example is a young player. He's got a very mature hockey IQ. A reunion of sorts for Matt Nieto. He and Charlie Coyle were teammates at Boston University from 2010 to 2012. Now Suter controlling it behind the Minnesota net. He'll come up the wing. Back across for Parisi. Rodine, that takes a big bounce right up the middle. Fortunately, Couture's there for the Sharks. Back in for Logan, can't catch it backhand. Lost it behind the net, but Marlowe keeps it going. Vlasic takes a shot, it hits the post as Couture is down and shaken up in front of the Minnesota net. He's hurt. He's hurt. It goes off of his head and almost, he's, he's cut. You can see he is bleeding goes off of his head and hits the post and he is upset now goes to the front of the net shot goes up high ouch look at this it bangs off the post and he is bleeding he is upset that he got hit one thing you go you, you go to the front of the net it takes courage to go to the front of the net Mark Edward Vlasic just unleashes the shot and this crowd's gotten a little hush because seeing one of your star players go off like that you get a little worried now talk about a tough night for Couture after two periods he had seven shots he had a crossbar now he has one hit him on the side of the head and hit the post no less that goes in that's like Bobby Clarkish great Philadelphia Flyer once scored a goal out of the head so Couture in for repairs as the Sharks are down to 8-10 here in the third. Heatley, there's a shot saved by Niemi. Also Kanaka, fourth line on here for the while. Matt Irwin, and he'll lift it off the glass up in the direction of Tomas Hurdle. Tomas with a goal tonight, his team leading 15. Niederreiter gets it in. Good work behind the net there by Jason Demers. Off Nino Niederreiter. Back in by Brodeen wide of the San Jose net. Demers again. Suter met by Dejardin. Back up top, a shot to flex, they score! I believe it hit Niederreiter and changed direction and bounced past Niemi to make it 3-1. Brodeen took the shot. Look in front of the net. Got to get pucks out. Got to be able to do that work along the boards. Got to get pucks out. Tommy Wingles comes out. Shot. Brad Stewart. It's off Brad Stewart. You're right. Off of Brad Stewart. Brad turns. He's got his guy pushed to the outside. It goes off of Brad Stewart's chest and goes in the net. Brad's saying, yeah, that's bad luck for the Sharks, but you've got to get pucks out again. The Minnesota Wild, in case anybody hasn't noticed, they're not going away. They're not quitting. You've got to get back on your game. Here the Sharks find a way to close this out. Now Parisi over the line. Minnesota played last night in Anaheim. See what they have here in the second half of the third period. They're certainly going to get a boost from the goal. No question about that. 3-1 now as Niemi's bid for a shutout is spoiled. Off, well, just a bad bounce off Brad Stewart. But it was created by some hard work from the Minnesota Wild. And also the inability to get a puck out. Burns does get this out, but right back to Spurgeon. One of the things Todd McClellan talked to his team about was the hard battles along the boards. Those little battles along the boards that gets a puck out or gets a puck in or keeps it in the corner. Or is able to fight for it off the, out of the paint for a chance on net. Those are the little battles. You win those, you can win the game. Irwin, hard around for Burns, but it drops right back to Jared Spurgeon and over to Marco Scandella. 6.15 left in the third. 
Things a little different now, a 3-1 game. Thornton flips the fly ball to center, right to the feet of Scandella. Good stick in the neutral zone by Wingles. Now it's forced to the net. Niemi catches and drops for Demers. Nice play, Jason Demers. Good support from across as well. Wingles with Desjardin and Nieto. Puck there for Danny Heatley. He'll send it up the boards for Kanapka. Back to Stewart. And that'll go up onto the wild bench with 526 left here in the third. A little scramble in the corner. We'll be back here at SAP Center. Here with our Toyota game summary, give you all the goals in the first period. Sharks on a power play. And it's Joe Pavelski's shot that gets through, made it 1-0. Still in the first to get on the power play. Good work by Wingles to Tomas Hurdle, his team leading 15th. Then in the second, another power play. And again, it'll be Joe Pavelski. Some good work by Havlat screening the goaltender. And then here in the third, just moments ago, the shot by Jonas Brodeen off Brad Stewart. And into the back of the net, Fontaine and Suter with the assist. Joe Pavelski, 21 career, two goal games with no hat tricks. Only Pavel Datsuk. Among active players has more. One goal, his sixth goal of the season. Now Suter back behind the blue line for Minnesota. They're down by two now with a little over five to go. Fontaine, Niederreiter tried to catch and stuck to the net, but failed to do so. Suter keeps it in at the point. Off Thornton stick, and he'll throw it right up the middle to on goal, so there's no chance for icing here. 39 shots on goal for the Sharks, so they've bettered their output in Minnesota Sunday afternoon when they had 38. It's still a tight game. Pavelski trouble on the boards, and Niederreiter stuffs it back in. Demers back. Losing his edge is Fontaine, or there could have been trouble with Coyle back there as well. Now the Sharks come up the boards. Here's Kennedy across to Pavelski. Back in front, it took a bounce. That prevented Marlowe from getting a chance out of it. Pavelski back into the corner. Kennedy takes it to the net. Shoots it off the outside of the goal, gets his own rebound. Now on the other side, Kennedy again into the middle. Poking away at it is Marlowe. Backstrom's got it covered. Stay tuned, Insurance Sharks post-game live right after the conclusion of this one. Brody Brazil and Curtis Brown are here at SAP Center, along with Jamie Baker to provide perspective. We'll go inside the Sharks dressing room as Logan Couture comes back out onto the ice for the Sharks to a round of applause here from the gathered, and that's obviously great news. Fantastic news, without a doubt. Brodeen, who got credit for that goal. Around for Ryan Suter. Suter, he hasn't scored a goal this year. In fact, he hasn't scored a goal in 44 games going back to last season. But he does lead the defense with 17 assists. There's the cut on the eye. Logan Couture very well repaired by the Sharks medical staff. But that's why you wear a visor. Kids? Adults who are playing out there get behind the windshield. Well, the kids wear full cages. It's good. Mandatory in USA it's hockey. Would be right through to the end of the college level. And now it's getting grandfathered into the NHL, which is great. This will roll wide of the net. But icing waved off as Brodeen had time to get to it. It's been defend, 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 mostly in this third period for the Sharks. And it's like Adam Burr said, you know, again, reiterate. Oh, here we go. Wingles. Wanted Nieto just a little bit off the mark with that blind backhand pass. He kind of knew the area, just wasn't able to put it on the tape. Boyle. And he'll chip it in from center. Kravelski trying to get it. Before Scandella does camp, but Scandella laid it right onto the stick of Wingles. Now Pavelski checked in the corner.
Scandella ahead to Matt Cook. Pavlat back defensively to Irwin. Up to Wingles and back out again. And that'll go off Pavelski's stick onto the San Jose bench with just under three left. This is pretty well sorted out, I think. Here, Marty Havlitt's got this man right here, and of course, puck carrier, puck carrier there. And Dan Boyle's going to back up to the center. Go ahead and roll this real time if you want, gang. Marty Havlitt's got him. Dan Boyle says, yep, got him. Go back to the center. Make sure you take out the, the slot area in case it comes to the middle of the ice. Sharks sort that out real well. Good back check, good track by Martin Havlitt. Now Thornton against Coyle. Ryan Suter, by the way, has just gone over the 30 minutes game played, Mark. After that last shift, he was at 30 and 46 seconds. But that's a normal night for him. Mr. Half an hour. That's what they call him in the room. Scandella rolling puck, and it takes a deflection wide. Burns. He seals off the boards, plays nicely to Irwin. And Matt Irwin will send it deep into the zone. Takes a wicked hop off those back boards. Backstrom had to be careful. As we're down to 216 left in regulation. Pominville bouncing dangerously toward the net. Vlasic tried to clear it. He fanned. Now the net empty for Minnesota as Backstrom's left for the extra skater just as the puck is iced by the Sharks. 156 left in the third. And the Sharks with a two-goal lead, the Minnesota net empty. Thank you, we'll probably call his timeout. Timeout, Minnesota. Now Tom McCollum gets the setup where he wants, of course, defensively as well. Sharks looking to break this four-game winless slump. Three regulation losses and then the shootout loss on Tuesday. Sharks' next game, a Saturday night on ice in Nashville. As the Sharks meet the Predators for the first time this regular season. Pre-game live from Music City, USA at 4.30 on Saturday. Make it appointment viewing. Be with us from Tennessee. So here we go. Everybody rested up for this final minute 56 of regulation. The Wild down by two. Their net's empty. They send out Koibu, <laughs> Brodziak, Pominville, Suter, Spurgeon. And as you see, the empty net down at the other end. Good face off. Parisi, Koibu, Pominville save and then the rebound cleared by Couture. Sharks win the draw, don't get it open. Logan Couture does an outstanding job coming back to the net. And now it's out to center, back to Spurgeon. Quick re-entry by the Wild as Pominville sends it in. Koivu trying to get it out from under the stick of Blasic. Demers helping out his partner. Time of wasting for the Wild here. No culture making sure he gets on the defensive side here. Now it comes out. Brodziak, Koivu, Spurgeon, shot block. Now Couture, he's got Marlowe, banks it off the boards to Patrick, oh. and it just went offside. Hey, you're not scoring goals, but you're still making an impact. How you make an impact? First off, you win the draw. Puck doesn't get out. What happens? You got to come back. Look, he comes back inside his man. He's got body position. He's got defensive side and puck positioning. Logan Couture does and clears the puck away from an empty net. Very nice job defensively by Logan Couture. He'll watch from the bench for now, minute three to go. And also on that, he blocked the shot. Now you mentioned he had a good shot block. That's a very good shift. All of that coming after getting bonked on the head with a puck. I'd be out till, I don't know, Valentine's Day if I got a puck off the head. Some suggest that's happened already. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you, you broadcast hurt. 
We're under a minute now. Suter sends it ahead. Wild can't get in, on side at least, as it's cleared back to their line. And it goes Pommenville after it in the corner. Brad Stewart there first. Now Koivu to Parisi. His shot blocked. Spurgeon. Koivu. And he lost it. And Wingles now. Tried to set up Pavelski for a hat trick goal, but it was blocked by Spurgeon. Back down to Braun. He'll slap it up the boards. Comes back to the front of the net. Stewart guides it to the far side. And Joe Thornton's going to skip this one wide of the open net. And this will be an icing call with 10.1 seconds to go. Minnesota does not waste any time when that puck is down into the zone. They just turn and fire it towards the net, try to get it out in the slot as much as they can. 10.1 seconds. And you've got both Pavelski and Joe Thornton out to take the face off. Parisi cannot get back on the ice. And... Why is the Wild putting their goalie back on the can ice? I, can I, was he, you know, he wasn't back then. I'm not sure why they did that. Sharks tie it up after the faceoff. Brodeen over to Scandella. One last chance. The shot blocked and the Sharks win. Joe Pavelski, he'll get a lot of votes for first star here tonight. A two-goal performance, both of them on the power play. All three Sharks goals coming on the power play, which is like medicine for this team, which has had so many problems over the past two weeks with the man advantage. But it clicked tonight when it needed to. Some excellent goaltending from Antti Niemi. The only puck that went by him was a crazy bounce off Brad Stewart. And congratulations all around. Well-deserved for a victory for the Sharks here to send them on the road with a win after four straight games without one and as you said exactly what the doctor ordered it's a medicine for the sharks lots of good things to talk about for the coaching staff to this team and the team to talk amongst themselves and some more stuff to work on trying to close out the game in a little bit more of efficient fashion sharks now with 46 points in the pacific division as their record improves to 26 and 6 and here at home they're now 11 one and three just one regulation loss at sap center let's go to the ice now and tonight's three star selection tonight's three stars of the game are brought to you by playstation the third star of tonight's game from your sharks number 39 logan couture the second star of tonight's game from your sharks Number 31, Ati Niemi. And the number one star of tonight's game, from your Sharks, number eight, Joe Pavelski. And now let's head over to the Sharks bench and join Brody Brazil with our number one star tonight. Joe, congratulations on a game where you guys never trailed. You got the power play going back again with three goals, and you were able to close it out. Wasn't this the type of win you guys needed to end that streak? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it was some tough stretches where we had leads in the third. We coughed them up, like you said. Um, guys have played well. We haven't scored enough goals to win. Uh, Nemo shut the door tonight for us, and it was really good. Your second goal was an instance of plays that hadn't gone well for you before, bouncing pucks, things like that. But you were able to go down to your knees and able to score that one. Yeah, once we got it in the zone, uh, we moved it around, had a few good looks. Um, puck just got bouncing and finally found it there. I feel like every time we do these interviews, you only, or you always only get two goals and, and never that third. How bad do you want that first hat trick? It'd be nice, obviously. You know the count of how many two goal games I have. I don't really know it. Uh, that third one would be nice. Hopefully it comes soon. As long as you win, uh, you'll take the two goals. Joe, obviously you guys were able to turn things around here on the homestand a little bit, feel better about your game. How do you feel about this team now headed on the road for three? It's good. We found our legs a little bit tonight, and uh, definitely the power play has given us a lot of momentum here the last few games, so that has to continue on the road. Joe, congratulations. All right, thanks. Sharks forward Joe Pavelski had two of the Sharks' three goals tonight. And the final score, the Sharks three and the Minnesota Wild won.
And Sharks post-game live starts now.